Uh, good afternoon. Thanks, Dr. Blum, for having me back. Uh, a year ago, I was here, and um, uh, Dr. Blum had invited me, and I always ask him, uh, what can I possibly talk about that would be of interest to SOT practitioners? Because I don't practice SOT. I, I, you know, I like blocks. I've done studies on blocking. And he always said, uh, SOT doctors are not freaks. They're just like every other chiropractor. They treat the same kinds of things that you treat. Uh, and that kind of sets the stage. Whatever I'm working on at that time, he said, would be of interesting to chiropractors. And in that spirit, this is what I'm working on. Uh, a year ago, I talked about the uh, accuracy of spine palpation. I went through a, a, a project where I had accumulated all the literature that I could find on that. And just turning to the lumbar portion of it, it turned out that uh, in the nine or ten studies where people looked at the accuracy of lumbar spine palpation, it turned out that the mistakes were endemic and that the mistakes were always cephalid. And by that I mean whenever a doctor was looking for, say, L4, they tended to land higher than that. They would find L3. And if they were looking for L2, they might find L1. Uh, that means that there's systematic bias. This is not just to be understood as chiropractors having a bad day at the office. It means there's something wrong with the algorithm, the way that they're looking for the vertebrae. That got my attention. Uh, turning to today, what got my attention is Dr. Mirsky, if I have the name right, was speaking about the, uh, the adrenal gland and looking at the CMRT procedure for the adrenal gland. And it got my attention that he said that L5 was very important. And so my question to the SOT doctors is, can they find L5? Uh, or are they finding, like every other doctor who's looked for it, L4? Or for all I know, L3? Does it make a difference if you're treating the adrenal gland if you do your procedure on L4 instead of L5? How might better the outcomes be in SOT if you actually found the bone you were trying to treat as consistently as you would like to be able to find it? So that's what I want to talk to you today about, about the... Uh, some of the reasons for these uh, kind of um, systematic biases in lumbar palpation. You can see the title of the talk. Uh, so what I did is I, uh, I dug up all the literature that I could uh, that might explain uh, why it is that doctors, as I was going through that literature on the accuracy of spine palpation, if I can just cut to the chase over here, I think it would be better to tell you what my punchline is before I get started. There's a big difference between um, the uh, location of the um, of the uh, lumbar vertebra that corresponds to the iliac crest, there's a big difference between what is seen on radiology and what happens when a person is palpated. Uh, this is from an article by someone, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, named Chakraverti, who shows you that, uh, as everybody says, uh, when you're using an imaging procedure, be that um, x-ray, be that ultrasound or MRI, it's quite true that the iliac crest lines up with L4. And that's what people have been using as their benchmark for finding not only L4, but for vertebra above and below that. The problem is when you put your hands on, this, on a person looking for the iliac crest, uh, you're not really on the iliac crest. We get so used to speaking that way as chiropractors that we put our hands on iliac crest, on mammillaries and spinous processes, that we forget that what we're putting our hand on is protoplasm that overlays all these bones. And so when we're looking for the iliac crest, our fingers actually find a lot of, uh, how shall I put this delicately, blubber. Uh, that sits on, and that's on people who have a, a, a small BMI, not just people that are kind of chunky. We put our hands on a lot of subcutaneous fat tissue, and the fingers are higher than L4. And as you see over here, they're actually uh, closer to around L3. That's my punchline. Over here, we have a, an x-ray from another study where uh, some radio-opaque marker was used. And you can see um, that when markers were applied to the PSISs, you can see that line CD at the bottom. Uh, the markers were applied to where the iliac crest is between lines E and F over there, but the fingers looking for the iliac crest landed on uh, line AB, which is about, uh, about one vertebra higher than the iliac crest is as seen on imaging. So I did a literature um, retrieval process over here using the usual databases, um, and uh, this is the process of retrieving all that literature. Uh, my understanding is you have access to all of these slides online. Is that right, Dr. Blum? So there's no reason on dwelling on it. This says I found articles. And uh, this says I found articles. Okay, I'm very good at that. And, uh, and then uh, after finding all these articles, I did what is called a, uh, a meta-analysis. This is a spooky term to people that aren't very well educated in biostatistics. A spooky term, but I guarantee you it is easier to do a meta-analysis than it is to apply for Obamacare. Or even, for social or even for Social Security, which I understand now that I just yeah. applied for it. A meta-analysis is easy because if you find the studies that are of interest to you, you only have to abstract three pieces of data from the study. One is the average location, in this case, 
of uh, where L4 was found to be or any lumbar vertebra. Uh, the next piece of information is the standard deviation, which is calculated in Excel off the shelf in about a split second. And a third information piece of information is the sample size. If you find those pieces of data for your study, you can then put that in for all the studies you have found, and it cranks out a diagram like this, which is called a scatter, uh, called a forest plot. And in the forest plot over here at the top, and the rectangle in the upper right over there, try that out. And this rectangle over there, each one of those uh, black uh, larger shapes over there indicates the average location of the, uh, of the lumbar vertebra that's nearest to the uh, iliac crest. And you can see that they're clustering over here at about 4.4 or so. And that is, uh, these are studies that are seen on um, imaging over here. And down over here, we can see those black dots again, and then this red dotted line that indicates where, where the palpator lands when uh, finding what he or she thinks is the iliac crest. And you can see that it's around 3.7, which is uh, the L3, inter L3, L4 inner space. The fact of the matter is, this uh, average location of the crest on palpation does not overlap this uh, little blue shape over there, which, which is where it is found on imaging. So we know that there is a statistically different location for palpation and for, and for imaging of where the iliac crest is. Uh, this is a slide that's very busy, and in the time I have, there's no, no way to explain this to you, but the content of the slide uh, is that when you're looking at these studies, there are different kind of patients in each study, and, uh, and everything depends on who are the patients that are being imaged or palpated. So the outcomes for men and women are different. For pregnant women and uh, women that are not pregnant is different. For senior citizens, different. Children, different. People with big BMIs, people with smaller BMIs, different. And that means that the location is a little bit wobbly. It changes from person to person, but nothing changes the fact that the average location on palpation is up around here, L3 and a half, meaning between three and four, and the average location on any imaging procedure is about a, a segment lower than that. These are the key findings for the study. It, summar it summarizes the uh, different locations for different demographic groups. I, I don't think I have the time to read this to you. Um, I will say, though, that, uh, that, that in, in reality, the, uh, female, the female spine is different from the male spine, and most women, at least not postpartum women or pregnant women, have their uh, lumbar spine lower in relationship to the crest than men. Men come in at about L4, women more like L4.5. On palpation, perversely, whether it's a male or a female, you're gonna wind up around L3 and a half. And that's because women have more subcutaneous fat uh, above the crest. It's just endemic to the female body. And that means that the difference in location between the imaged location and the palpated uh, location will always be greater in females compared with males. And that's what all that says. Uh, I, made a comment about, I made a comment about this last year. Our, we in manual therapy probably are not going to kill a patient by being on the wrong lumbar vertebra for CMRT or for spinal manipulation for that matter. Uh, but this is really a little bit spookier when it comes down to some of our colleagues in other professions. Uh, among uh, anesthesiologists, for example, who are often giving epidurals in the lumbar spine, uh, if they wind up one bone higher than they thought they were, this could be a big problem uh, especially in a patient whose conus medullaris comes down uh, one level lower than it does in most people. That creates the possibility of essentially stabbing the conus medullaris during an epidural, perhaps during childbirthing, and then you run the risk of getting a, a nasty little problem called conus medullaris syndrome, which has to do with anesthesiology uh, pretty similarly to what stroke has to do with chiropractic. It's their big horrible thing that might happen every now and then that they have to defend themselves against. So uh, for the manual therapist, what do we got to figure out? Well, we want to be uh, specific in our treatment and in our um, uh, diagnosis, of course. Uh, when it comes down to charting, we have to write down correctly what level that we treated. Um, if you're always wrong by one level, it may not matter too much, but if somebody else is guessing in your practice and looking at your chart notes, they won't know what you really did because you don't know what you really did. So it makes a difference in a multidisciplinary or multi-doctor setting. And of course, from a research point of view, it can be very important to know uh, where you actually are when treating. So uh, I already told you what the punchline was. I started out with that at the beginning of the talk, but here it is again. I do encourage you to get um, the slides from, uh, from the website that uh, Dr. Blum has called attention it's in to. It's the book. Hmm? In the book, the, your article's in the book. Oh, it's in the book. Yeah. So there you go.